and at that time, my dad was renting a single bedroom in a two bedroom apartment mm -hmm. that was owned by an English couple uh, whose name was Russell and Flossie. Then, as he worked and made money, he bought his own house mm -hmm. about three blocks from the original place that he rented, 1026 North Waterman, which was basically an immigrant neighborhood. Across the street were Hungarians, down the street were Germans, and uh, then there were uh, Maltese and Armenian. Everybody was an immigrant. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I think to some extent, it isn't like here, let's see, you're you raised in a Jewish community, or you're raised in an Arab community, so you have these stereotypes. We didn't have those. Yeah. So everybody, everybody was yeah. a mix. Right. So I think that helped your cultural feelings, too. Now, the only thing I thought was different is you wanted to be an American. Yes. Uh, you wanted to be like other Americans, and so you strived for that. Now, occasionally, I know my dad was called a camel jockey. So you get, some people will use certain names, you know, like the Japs or whatever. But that was rare, that you would be called out because of your nationality. Let me emphasize the point that he just made. As uh, Russell mentioned, uh, immigrants at that time, when they came, wanted to become American. Mm. And, and so, well, my mother and father spoke Arabic fluently and talked to each other in Arabic. Um, we were not encouraged, you might say, to learn Arabic growing up, but to become fluent and conversant in English. Right. And, um, and so, you know, looking back, I wish that uh, I would have uh, learned the Arabic language. Now, obviously, I know a few words here and there, yeah. um, and uh, Russell knows uh, more than I, I do in that regard. Um, but, um, you know, I've taken a liking to foreign languages, different mm -hmm. types of languages, and, and I wish I, I was fluent in Arabic. I ruined it for you, <laughs> because my dad gave me an Arabic dictionary. Uh -huh. And he says, start learning. And I went like this, I'm an American. And he gave me a whack. Oh. Wow. <laughs> so he quit trying on you. Yeah. <laughs> See, now that's a story I wasn't aware of. <laughs> Starting out in public school, which was only four houses away, Beard Elementary School on Waterman. So it was very convenient. At the end of the sixth grade, the teachers would vote whether you should pass to the seventh grade. Mm -hmm. And the score in my case was three to two. Yeah. When my parents heard that, they went Boragas. Not blaming the teachers. Yeah. Picking yeah. on me. Right. And while everyone went to this other school, I had to go to a parochial school mm. where they uh, didn't allow you to have that kind of behavior. And when they transferred him to Holy Redeemer, the parochial school, uh, they, she, they also transferred me and I went into the fourth grade uh, from Beard Elementary School, uh, the same school that he, uh, Russell was at, and I also went to Holy Redeemer uh, in, in the fourth grade. And then continued through uh, elementary school and high school. This is before your time, but parochial schools were pretty damn tough. Yeah. Yes. I mean, they cracked your knuckles. They had you to get on your knees so they could hit you better in the face, and, <laughs> and all kind of Discipline. stuff that you, they wouldn't do today. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. now, generally, if you wanted to see a collection of Arabs, you went to church on Sunday. Yes. And that's where, of course, St. Marin Church is all Maronites. Right. Yeah. And so they'd all be Arabs. But was there a group uh, like a Dearborn? No way. No. 
if you remember Hubbard. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I know. There was no <laughs> way Hubbard. there right. was a collection of Arabs mm -hmm. that I know. No. Other than going to church. And the, and the St. Marin was on the east side of Detroit, where was, we were on the southwest part right, of Detroit. Right. Bit of a drive. Yes, a so, but we would go there on Sunday uh, to church. So that was traditional. And that's where we would see other uh, Lebanese and Arabs. Again, I would go back to the idea that uh, at that time, again, uh, immigrants who came here wanted to become Americanized and so mm -hmm. when we were raised uh, right. we were Americans and so uh, and absolutely food was a uh, major and so we always would have Lebanese food uh, very common as well as some American food yeah. but, uh, and I miss uh, many of those foods <laughs> today. <laughs> Although my daughter uh, has learned to uh -huh. uh, cook some of those Lebanese foods and so it's a treat when I yeah. visit with her. Um, was it tough getting some of those ingredients? Because I know it can be different. Michigan and Lebanon are very different environments. I don't know. Well, there were supermarkets, particularly in, uh, uh, in, in different parts of Detroit that and, and right around St. Mary's and so on like that, mm -hmm. that carried uh, some of the Lebanese food. And so they would make special trips to those uh, stores to, uh, to get the food. Uh, and of course, lamb was a, a meat that was very commonly used. And, and uh, not all grocery stores would carry the lamb. And I can vividly remember my mother going into some of the supermarkets and going to the butcher and going, so I'll come and I'll show you what part of the lamb that I want. <laughs> and so she was very particular uh, mm -hmm. so that she could make a kippy. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and so uh, sometimes they struggled to get exactly what they wanted. Mm -hmm. But they did. <laughs>